All right, let's talk about Justin Herbert, someone who, you know, I think it has become a narrative out there that people are kind of saying, okay, if you are that guy, if you are this elite quarterback, how come your team doesn't really seem to do that well? You've, you know, have won a playoff game at this point into your career, only made one playoff game, which you lost, uh, you know, now starting this year, 0-2. And I think the obvious answer is, well, because it's a team sport and a quarterback can't do it alone. But let's talk about how he played in this game. I thought as a whole, he was really good in this game. And I think that he has consistently been good. I think that, you know, the failures of the team that have happened, I would not put on him. And this game was another example of him, I think, playing well despite a loss. And we'll start off with this play you see on the screen. It's a fourth down and one. So important play early on in this game. Uh, he does have a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside. So, okay, that's something that he's going to look towards. It's Mike Williams on the outside, who I also thought that, you know, for the most part had a good day. Uh, watch what he's going to do here in this one-on-one -on -one matchup. As you see, you're going to see him cut cut back right here, and Herbert is in the throwing motion. This is a well-timed play. You want to make sure you time these up quickly and you're able to get rid of the football quickly and at the perfect time because again four of down and one you don't really have time to hesitate and make sure it's a completion and all that you kind of have to just go and that's what Herbert's doing here it's also a perfectly accurate throw gets there in a hurry and Mike Williams does some good stuff after the catch that allowed them to pick up the first down again I would say this was an effective day by the Chargers offense and to be honest it probably could have been even more effective like something like this, where it's going to be a second down and seven situation. So that's uh, how this, you know, that's the, that's the scenario. They're at midfield right at the start of the second quarter. There is a route for Herbert that is going to get into eventually double coverage. So maybe you could argue is not the correct decision. But again, double coverage doesn't mean you can't make the throw there. It just means you have to be more careful. And usually it's you know less likely to be open. But once again, this is Mike Williams. Uh, let's see what he can do on this play. Herbert's going to take the snap. He runs play action. He's going to fire the ball down the field, and there's a little bit of a window. There was also a little bit of contact by Tennessee, which uh, has definitely disrupted Williams a little bit. But, you know, an incredible throw and a great catch, and you can get the completion here. And the incredible throw part was there. I mean, that's exactly where Herbert wanted to put the ball. Mike Williams just went down at the last second. I thought this happened. I thought there were yards left on the table for Herbert. I'm not saying the receiving core was bad. Like I said, I think Williams and Keenan Allen both had good days in this one. I don't think it was a bad receiving core thing, but just that there were also moments when it could have been even better that just weren't able to happen through no fault of Herbert's. And in fact, there's no better example than this play where it's going to be a zone coverage concept, cover two that the Titans are in, and you have a receiver running a route that's going to get towards the corner of the end zone. This is not Mike Williams. It's not Keenan Allen. It's Joshua Palmer, who in fairness has made some nice plays over his career, but okay, not necessarily the superstar you're looking towards. Also, this is a third down and four situation. Herbert's going to take the snap. He it looks actually starts off looking towards his right, but then looks over and sees that there is a small window. I mean, this is not a big window. Again, in the, you know, sort of right at the eight yard line, trying to get, get a big window in the end zone. That just doesn't usually happen, but even this is particularly small for a end zone scenario. That being said, look at the pinpoint accuracy of this one to nearly create a touchdown on that play. It wasn't. It wasn't a touchdown. Uh, it ends up getting ruled incomplete, so unfortunate there for Herbert, unfortunate there for the Chargers. Uh, receiver just couldn't get his second foot in bounds, but he had time to do it. Uh, he just could, you know, uh, tried to drag the back foot, and it just stayed up, basically, but it wasn't like a bad throw from Herbert that the receiver couldn't quite you know, stay in bounds. The receiver had an opportunity to, and that's all you can do as a quarterback, is give your receiver a chance. So, I'm not showing this play to, you know, uh, say, oh, wow, Joshua Palmer sucks. I'm showing this play to say that, you know, he, I think, was even better than maybe the statistics would show. I've kind of talked about in the past how I thought a lot of times Herbert last year had a lot of really impressive days that this, the numbers didn't exact, exactly back that up. The you know box score stats didn't exactly back that up. The box score stats were good in this game. I mean, 41 attempts, 305 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. That's a good statistical day, but I thought he was even better than that and just they weren't able to capitalize on some of it. This play was incredible. Uh, this is just absolutely uh, fascinating where it's going to be, you have a, you know, a player for Tennessee. I have circled him right there. That's going to be a key guy to watch. Watch how he just powers through the center, gets right to Herbert, and somehow 
does not knock Herbert down. I mean, somehow Herbert gets back to his feet. Okay, incredible job by Herbert to stay up. You know, that's what uh, one of the biggest things when he got drafted was how big and strong he is. That's where that comes through. But still, there's pressure right in your face, and he's just looked up. So, like, what are you going to do? Well, let's keep in mind. It's a fourth down and four situation. There was just a flag thrown. Herbert doesn't know that. So for Herbert, you're basically in a situation where it's better to throw one down the field and hope for the best than to just take a sack or throw the ball away. If this is first down, probably best to just th throw the ball away. But it's not. You know, at the end of the day, a sack is very much a bad thing. A throw away is just as bad as an interception. So let's toss one toward the end zone and see what happens. And as you see, Herbert does off his back foot make a beautiful throw. They get a touchdown on that play. Really good stuff. Good stuff from Keenan Allen, but great stuff from Justin Herbert. And this is just the kind of thing that he is capable of doing. And that's definitely part of what just, you know, gets people so excited about him and what people talk about him is the athleticism is just off the charts. And he can make certain throws that other players just can't make. He can make certain plays that other players just can't make. And it's not like he does this in like a Justin Fields way where he'll wow you one play and make you scratch your head the other. He doesn't make you scratch your head. Like he's, you know, he has the wow plays while still being a good game manager type. Like, this is a very basic play, but it kind of goes to what I'm saying about he can also do the game management stuff, where this is going to be a man coverage play that Tennessee is in, and the route that Herbert is going to uh, eventually look towards is actually going to be Keenan Allen's route. You know, there's a route over the middle that appears like it could get open. The defender who is, you know, playing off uh, is playing further off there, whereas the guy on Allen is playing right up at the line. But you have to keep in mind, there are currently five Tennessee players on the line, meaning that you feel pretty confident four of them are going to rush the passer, but you don't know what that extra guy is going to do. Is he going to, you know, cover the halfback? Is he going to blitz? Is he going to drop back in coverage? If you can avoid right over the middle of the field for a quick pass, it might be worth doing it. And again, just to set up the situation, uh, first down and five, but there's a minute and 34 seconds left and you're down three. I mean, failure is not an option on this drive. What I do technically have three timeouts that I could, you know, afford a turnover and still potentially have a chance. You do not want to put yourself in that position. As you see, Herbert throws it to Allen quickly. Allen got open quickly, and they were able to pick up uh, the first down. That got them to overtime. I mean, that was the play that allowed overtime to happen in the first place after Tennessee came roaring back to take the lead. You look at a lot of the, the failures when things didn't go well, which wasn't that often, but a lot of times I thought the failures were just good defense by Tennessee. Uh, some quick pressure was able to happen. Also, just, you know, uh, Tennessee covers well. So even though the receive, it was good receivers, it was also good defense, and it kind of all worked together. And at the end of the day, you know, 24 points can win you most football games. Or at least that's kind of what you have to get, especially against against Tennessee, 24 points against that defense. That's a really actually good day offensively, especially when they had basically no running game. Joshua Kelly had three yards per carry in this one as their leading rusher. He had 13 carries. So, uh, you know, definitely without a doubt, uh, I thought that uh, Herbert was the reason they were in it, and I think that kind of the people that criticize Herbert, like, I do get it. I actually do get it, because typically when you have one of these quarterbacks that uh, certain people hype up, but they never seemingly go on deep playoff runs, it's more of like a, like a Derek Carr situation where it's like, okay, that guy is good, but he's not, like, elite, so you can kind of understand why people might just start to assume maybe Herbert's in that a camp as well, but there are exceptions to the, you know, great quarterbacks tend to win Super Bowls rule, and I think Herbert is one of those exceptions. That's how I view it, and I thought he played really well against Tennessee, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.